I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. I'm not going to let this happen. I am your walrus, cuckoo cuckoo. Earlier this year, before the indictments against him started to flow like water, Donald Trump made his intentions clear, openly talking about leveraging the power of a future presidency for political reprisals. Now he is facing a potential third indictment, with even more possibly waiting in the wings, all while trying to make the case to the American voters that he should be trusted to sit behind the resolute desk for a second term. And we are already learning of the plans being prepared if somehow, some way, Trump is able to win in 2024. The New York Times is reporting on the ways Trump and his allies are planning to expand presidential power and remove the guardrails that kept him at least partially in check. The warnings about a second Trump presidency are also laid out in a new book by former Trump administration official and author of the famous 2018 anonymous New York Times op-ed criticizing Trump, Miles Taylor. The book is Blowback, a warning to save democracy from the next Trump. And Miles Taylor joins me now. Miles, great to talk to you. Look, not everybody does this, but I can literally put up your book and show all the places that I have highlighted. This is this is legitimately a really interesting read, very compelling um, and moving because it's not just you talking about the dangers of Trump. But the, the part that I want you to start with is the amount of risk that people who are standing against Trump and want to be those guardrails, whether it's you or, or, or Liz Cheney, talk about the sort of physical danger uh, that people are facing by talking about how dangerous a future Trump or a second Trump presidency could be. Well, Jason, uh, in a sense, uh, I'm a cautionary tale. And, you know, I try to get really, really personal in this book about those consequences, not because I'm looking for sympathy. You and I have talked about this before. I don't need the sympathy, but people need to see inside of the reality of what dissent looks like in this country. I mean, I'm someone who still has restraining orders against stalkers, someone who still continues to get death threats. We had to move my family. We had to live in safe, safe houses. I mean, on election night 2020, I spent election night under armed guard in a safe house in Northern Virginia with a pistol under my pillow because of the death threats. This is not what free speech should look like in the United States. That sounds like what happens in third world autocracies. And you opened this segment by saying Trump is laying out the playbook for how to turn the United States into a centrally run uh, dictatorship. That sounds like crazy rhetoric, but it's the reality we're living in. And he's spelling it out in excruciating detail. And I've got to say, the reporting you mentioned from The Times, Maggie Haberman and Jonathan Swan did an outstanding standing job, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. And that's why I wrote Blowback, is to go into deep detail about exactly how they want to weaponize the federal government department by department to exact revenge against their rivals. And don't hear it from me, because the people quoted in this book are the people around yeah. Donald Trump, his former top lieutenants and senior Republicans in Congress and who've recently left Congress. You know, it's no surprise to anyone watching, anyone reads anything that I do, listens to my podcast. I have been highly critical of the current administration for not being aggressive enough and not only prosecuting the people who are engaged in the ongoing coup, but also for not strengthening the guardrails that this country needs to have to protect us against either Trump coming back or another version of Donald Trump. Talk a little bit about, because you mentioned this in the book, like our, our, our only safety valve here is our guardrails. What do you think the current administration is doing? Did you, know, did you write this book because you don't think that the Biden administration is doing enough? Or do you see some signs that they're taking some of the concerns that you're laying out in this book seriously? Well, I wrote the book in part, Jason, because I'm sick of all these Trump retrospectives of people trying to burnish their credentials and rewrite their story. We don't need another Trump memoir on the bookshelves. And no offense to my former colleagues who've gone and written Trump retrospectives. What I wanted to see is someone to tell us what Trump wanted to do in a first term, what he was stopped from doing, and what he would do if given a chance to go back into public office, and what the, and what the MAGA movement would do if it was a copycat. So this is a forecast 
uh, and unfortunately, a, a very chilling forecast about what could happen if we make the civic mistake of giving like right. uh, someone like that a second opportunity. Now, as, as for the guardrails that you mentioned, unfortunately, we all hoped that the people around Donald Trump would keep him from doing bad things. But we learned that even well-meaning bureaucrats could not keep a wayward chief executive in check. So the wow. executive branch guard rails were broken. Congress failed to hold Donald Trump accountable in those two impeachments. Now we're hoping that the judiciary does something. But as you've noted well, Donald Trump is still surging in the polls. He's likely to be the GOP nominee despite, despite being twice indicted. So I don't think we can count on the three branches of government. It's going to be up to the voters to prevent our democracy from falling off a knife's edge. I got to point this out. Uh, you know, you sort of list the potential Trump cabinet based on conversations that you had with former members. These are the kinds of people that he wants to put into office. You've got Pam Bondi, Michael Flynn. I, I mean, I read through this list, and it, it reminded me of that scene in Blazing Saddles, where they're trying to put together the gang, and they've got, they got Nazis, they got Klan members. I, I was waiting to see, like, Gargamel and Sauron on this list. I mean, it's just, it's just a rogues gallery of maniacs and freaks who would destroy our government. When people were mentioning these things to you, when they were saying, look, our new administration could look like an absolute clown car, were they saying it because... They were like, I, I do believe this is going to happen or because this is our best case scenario because it could actually be worse. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, the, the people that I interviewed for this book, my former colleagues and Trump cabinet secretaries described this as, quote, a nightmare slate. I mean, the fact that Trump's own lieutenants would say if given a second go around, he would bring in a nightmare slate of public officials. It's not you saying it, Jason, and it's not TV commentators. It's Trump's own people. That should really worry you. If you thought a first Trump administration was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet because the people who were willing to stand up to Donald Trump and the MAGA movement who would try to say no to illegal and unethical and unconstitutional ideas will not be back for a second go around. It will be the enablers. And look, I'm not saying that those of us who went in to try to keep the guardrails wrong did everything right. In fact, I have enormous regrets about how that was handled. We were naive and thinking we could keep him in check. But that's the message right. I want to send, is do not count on good people going in in a second go-around. It will be the enabler. It this. will be people who want to execute his vision. Miles Taylor, author of Blowback. Guys, this is a legitimately good book. You should check it out. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on The Readout. Thanks, Jason.